Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another Magic Puzzle Quest video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the first Bloomborough Planeswalker, Rawl Crackling Wit. So, let's get into it. Webcore sent me this planeswalker so that I could make this review for you all, so thank you Webcore for sending me this walker so I could make this review. Rawl Crackling Wit is the third Rawl to come to Puzzle Quest. Rawl Crackling Wit has its very own unique identity in spite also being a spell-based planeswalker. This Rawl has 113 health, has plus 4 to both blue and red for the mana bonuses, and has 3 abilities that are all going to relate to spells. The first ability is going to destroy a block of gems, then you're going to pick two of the first four spell cards that are in your library and you're going to make a copy of those cards in your hand. You aren't actually fetching those cards out of your deck, you're simply making copies of the first two spells that you choose from the first four into your hand. The second ability is going to create Is It Otter Tokens. Those are going to have prowess, meaning when you cast a spell, something's going to happen. That's going to be a one-time per turn effect, where it's going to burn your opponent's first creature and their planeswalker, equal to the number of otters you control. You get otters from these Is It Otter Tokens over here, and you're also going to get otters from the Storm Otter Tokens from the third ability. The second ability also is going to give the first spell card in your hand six mana, but because these Is It Otter Tokens have when you cast it on the first time. It can't trigger more than once per turn. Uh, it's an entirely useless ability. I think I've used it zero times. The third ability, Storm Apprentice, is going to create four Storm Otter tokens. Those Storm Otter tokens are going to make it so that when you cast a spell, you're going to create a copy of the first spell card from your library into your hand, and then give all copy cards in your hand full mana. This ability can also only trigger once per turn, and at the beginning of your turn, if you do happen to control another otter, you're going to deal X damage to your opponent's planeswalker equal to the support's shields. So the gameplay loop with Rawl Crackling Wit is very unique compared to the other two Rawls. You look at the three abilities and you think, okay, well, this is going to be a planeswalker that I'm going to want to be running a spell deck with, which at its core is basically true. However, this is going to differ from the other two Rawls in that the other two Rawls really specialize in getting loops going or making loops more deadly. Whereas this Rawl really doesn't excel there at all. If you want to go with one of those two types of decks, you should run one of the other two Rawls. This Rawl, on the other hand, is the best at taking a single spell and breaking that one spell. Meaning that if you have any of the very powerful red spells that are currently in standard in your possession, you can make a deck using Rawl Crackling Wit and those spells and have an incredibly powerful deck. The sort of loop that you're going to be looking for with Rawl Crackling Wit is you're going to want to go ahead and get to that third ability first for 14 Loyalty. 14 Loyalty is very reasonable, so it's not that difficult to get there. And then once you get this, you're going to make it so that whenever you cast a spell, all the copies in your hand are going to get full mana, and that first spell that you cast is going to get you another copy and cast that as well. Meaning that once you get that third ability down, once you use your first ability, your first ability is going to give you two spell cards and turn them into copies in your hand. And so if you're running this sort of single spell deck, which is where this is really going to shine as opposed to the other Rawls, then you get that spell, you cast that one, and then you wind up getting three free spells out of it. Because you're going to get two from this, you're going to get one from the Storm Apprentice ability, all of them are going to get full mana thanks to the way that Storm Otter works, and then you're going to cast all three of them. Meaning that if you have a well-oiled machine, you're going to be taking that single spell of yours and casting it three times per turn. That is where Rawl Crackling Wit is going to be really deadly. The two best spells that I found to run with this Rawl are Season of the Bold, which is a spree card and is going to make it so that you're going to exile cards from your opponent's library and then deal damage to your opponent's first creature and themselves equal to the number of cards in your exile. Bonus, you're also going to get some gold tokens, which Rawl's first ability can destroy with the destroying a block of gems. And so Season of the Bold is a very quick way to wind up ending your opponent, especially if you have other cards in exile. However, if you haven't yet gotten Season of the Bold, another great choice from a previous set is Hell to Pay. Hell to Pay is going to deal damage to target creature or player, and then you're going to create gold tokens equal to the number of red gems on the board. 
This is another one that's going to pair incredibly well with that first ability, as using this is going to make it so that you're going to ping your opponent for damage. And then because of the way that the first ability works with destroying the blocks of gems, you're going to wind up getting a whole bunch of mana by destroying the gold tokens that enter the board. Casting this thing three times per turn is going to fill the entire board with gold tokens, which will fuel your hand with mana very nicely. This will be very much needing red gem conversion, and so the red gem conversion is really what's going to enable this to happen, because once you've turned the entire board into gold, you can no longer convert gems. And so this is mostly just you're going to have the red converters to get your loyalty up, and then to use them to have red gems on the board to burn your opponent with hell to pay, and then you're just going to laugh at all the mana and damage you're going to be doing. They're both very good strategies, however, I happen to think that the better strategy is the... Uh, season of the Bold strategy. It's just a lot easier to get things into exile. However, I recognize this is a new card and not everyone has it. So those are really the two strategies that I would recommend for this Planeswalker. Honestly, if you cannot build to either of those strategies, I would strongly advise against picking up this Planeswalker, as I feel like you would otherwise be better suited to picking up either of the other two Rawls. In this video, I will showcase a match in which you get to see the Season of the Bold deck in action, you get to see a match in which I'm using the Hell to Pay in action, and you'll get to see a match in which I'm running like a pseudo loop deck, so you can see how all three of them are going to play with this Planeswalker. With that, let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. The first deck that I'm going to showcase in this video is going to be the Season of the Bold deck. So this is the same deck that I ran in my Dragonhawk Season of the Bold video. And if you've seen that video, it'll be the same deck. If you haven't seen that video, it's a different deck. If you're wondering why I'm using the same deck twice, it's because I think it's that good. Now, the deck after this one is going to be um, the Hell to Pay, or whatever the red one is. It's pretty late my time. I really should just know these off the top of my head. Anywho, this is an incredible starting hand. It's not the ideal starting hand for making Rawls shine so much as it is for making all of the cards in the deck shine, but we'll see what winds up happening. I'm going to shoot for a Cascade here, uh, and I do get it. That's very nice. I get the turn one Dragonhawk, which is excellent, as that's going to start getting me free cards. The 12 mana creature is going to be a Fire Servant. That'll be nice. So I think here what I want is probably loot even though it's tempting to go for the Koth. I'm going to go for loot. I'm going to go for loot. I think I think loot's the right play here. So I'm going to take the little Cascade going there because that's going to get me closer to my third ability. And remember, I really want to get to my third. So I'm actually going to hold off on casting the Season of the Bold here because I want to get to my third first, as if I get to my third, then I'll get extra free castings of Season of the Bold. So I should be pretty close. 10 out of 14, perfect. I've got a uh, four mana, or I should say a four gem loyalty swap there on the bottom. Uh, and then with this, honestly, I think that next turn, I should just win off of one cast of Rawls third. So let's see. So I get an Autonomous Furnace, which is fine. I'm actually going to toss the Koth here, and then I really don't need any of this. I don't need the extra Fire Servant, so I'm going to toss that. I'll create my Storm Otter tokens, and then I've got Season of the Bold locked and loaded. So I really just need Spree 2 to be able to win with the Season of the Bold, as Spree 2 is what's going to do the damage. And so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a double match to ensure that I get that spree too. So I'm gonna go for red into green, and that's gonna give me the two. The Season of the Bold is gonna cast, and that's gonna be the first of two Seasons of the Bold. You'll see that I get another free one from Harry Otter over here, and then that's gonna finish off Commodore Guff. So easy win, really, really easy win. Uh, I did get the Dragon Hawk down early, to be fair, so that, that was a thing, and then I did wind up getting a pretty ideal set of circumstances that match. So I want to showcase just one more match with this so you can see error. Yes, I, I believe it. So you can see one more match of what it looks like when there isn't necessarily everything going perfectly, right? Um, it's not going to happen every match where, where that happens. So here we've got turn one loot and autonomous furnace, which is pretty great. I've actually got a really great starting swap here, too, with the green into blue into green. So 
I'm going to do that, see if that gets me a turn one loot. Turn one loot would, of course, be amazing, as that would start giving me free cards. So there's the turn one loot. That's good. That exiles 10. That's going to empower my Seasons of the Bold, and I get a Season of the Bold, which is good. And so now here, I think that the next best play for me is going to be to get uh, the Autonomous Furnace down. I do actually have a blue match. You guys might be surprised, but I'm not going to take the blue match here. Uh, simply, I want to try and get as much loyalty as I can, because the loyalty and getting to my third ability is actually the first thing that I'd like to do. So I've got a Pyromancer's Goggles. That's definitely going to be coming down here, as that's the free card with loot. And then I'm going to take the loyalty into black green. I'm going to toss these goggles just to ensure that I'm able to get my cards next turn. And then this will ensure that I am able to use my third. So I've actually, okay, great. I'll use my third right now. So I'm going to create the four otter tokens. There they go. And then, I mean, ooh, it's really tempting to try and get this fire servant down first. I don't think it happens. I think that maybe getting cough. You know, cough is just one mana, so let's let's definitely get the cough, just because this is unlikely to get me the, the Fire Servant. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So I'll still get two Seasons of the Bold, and then that's going to get me the gold tokens down. And then next turn, you're going to see me use my first ability to get more Seasons of the Bold. So here's where you'll get to see how the abilities work very nicely in conjunction with each other. So my opponent gets uh, a Vindicator down. The, the Vindicator is very bad, but I'm at more health than my opponent, so my opponent getting the Vindicator is really not going to be the end of the world here. So I'm going to get a free Season of the Bold there. I'm going to get another free Season of the Bold there as well. I'm allowed to take a free spell, so sure, I'll take a copy of Season of the Bold again. And then I could match with Koth, but let's just take the five match here. Um, and even though the Vindicator is going to soak up some damage here and ping it right back to me that's fine because my opponent's going to be taking it double and i have more health so uh easy win right here really really easy win that's how you can see how how this can really ramp so i had four more seasons of the bold to cast there uh and so with those other four i mean it, it doesn't matter what my planes what my opponent's planeswalker did right so that was like kind of like a worst case scenario in the form of phyrexian vindicator and it didn't matter because uh, the, the, the Season of the Bold was doing 60, and then the next one was going to be doing oh, an extra 5, and then doubled, so that would be 35, 70, um, and then 80, 90, and 100, or something like that. So, very, very dead. That's going to be it for this deck. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next deck now. For the next deck, it's going to be a Hell to Pay deck, and so this one, Hell to Pay, requires me to have Red Gems, so I decided to just make more of a fun deck here, just because I like having fun. And so you'll see that I'm using Realm Scorcher Hellkite, because this is going to be a really pretty art card that's going to do extra damage on red and can make, make red swaps. The Igniter, because this is going to swap things to red until I fill the board with gold tokens. And then just in case my opponent kills Oger Exonil or whatever, uh, it's going to be able to flip and give me the red gem conversion there. The rest of the deck is pretty straightforward, and so here I actually am matched up against Paladin Robin. Uh, that's amazing. Paladin Robin is another content creator. He goes by Planeswalker Coach on YouTube. I'm guessing that he is also recording content for Rawl if I'm running into him here, so that's hilarious. Hello there in the event that you're watching this video, buddy. Uh, if you have not yet checked out Paladin Robin's Planeswalker Coach channel, you should definitely do that. He's a newer creator, but... It's always good to have some fresh blood in the mix. And so here we've got the Autonomous Furnace first. That's good. With the Autonomous Furnace down first, that will give me some gem conversion. There are a number of red gems on the battlefield already, and so I'm feeling pretty good about that. What I'm going to do is take the black into blue, as that will confirm that I get the Autonomous Furnace down here turn one. My opponent makes a blue match, so that's actually really good for me, just because that means I'm more likely to get a swap or really a match, I guess, from the red conversion. I don't get the red conversion match, that's okay. Here I'm thinking I probably want to get the Pyromancer's Goggles down though. The Goggles will be really good for me. And then as for the swap, I guess I'm gonna take this one. I don't love it because it could have pinged my support a little bit. It didn't wind up pinging my support and for that I'm very grateful, but it could have, so. I've got a hell to pay right here, which is really great. 
Uh, I, I think I should still go for the goggles first and then go for hell to pay second. Normally I'd want to go for the hell to pay first just to get all the gold tokens down. But for this particular scenario, since Pyromancer's goggles is already pretty close to coming down, I'm going to go for that first. So my opponent seems to be insisting on making blue matches, blue swaps, which is great for me as that sets me up for that really nice red swap right there from the conversion. And then here I've got a Volt Strider, which is great. That's going to give me free mana to spells. Uh, I've got the the uh, the Ogre over here. So I think, I think the play here is going to be to get rid of the red match for my opponent, possibly Cascade. No Cascade, that's fine. I get the goggles. And then let's see what my opponent's going to do. My opponent's going to use their second. This is the first time that I'm ever seeing Rawl's second. Just the, the whole nature of it needing to happen once per turn just is not quite my cup of tea. So here we have a little bit of a conundrum. And that conundrum comes in the form of I can actually go ahead and get the free cast. So I'm going to get rid of that. I can go for the, the free cast of Hell to Pay, but if I do from that red going green into red, there's only three red gems on the battlefield. Uh, I think actually I'm still going to save up and try and get to my third here. I was actually going to use my first, but there just aren't going to be enough red gems on the battlefield to merit that. So I'm going to ping Harry Otter here first. Okay, that's that's just five. That's not a ton. And then we've got Koth coming down. I've got another Hell to Pay, so... I'm going to use Hell to Pay this time on... Yeah, I'll use it on Harry Otter again. Just just in case, right? Uh, and then here I'll have Koth convert some gems for me. And then I've got three gold tokens to destroy there on the right, which is really, really good. I'm two loyalty away from my third, so that's unfortunate. I could go for the loyalty match, and then the loyalty match will destroy the black gem. So you know what? I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to take the loyalty, destroying the black, because that's going to still get me my god here. And then my opponent is going to fill up the rest of my cards for me. That's great. And then here I'm just going to hope to get a few more red gems on the battlefield before we start matching more of those hell to pays. So let's go ahead, use the Storm Otter ability here. This is going to, this is going to help me out quite a bit. This is the downside to this deck over me using the other deck using Season of the Bold, just because with this version of the deck, we need to have red gems on the battlefield. However, it's still the same inevitable death for our opponent. And then the, this, the, the gameplay loop, if you will, once we get our third down is a little bit smoother because then once we're able to use our first ability, the first ability is just gonna destroy a whole bunch of gold tokens. And then in destroying all of those gold tokens, we just get so much mana out of it, which is really, really nice. So here I'm going to draw some bonus cards. Those bonus cards are thanks to my Kylox Volt Strider. I'm going to convert two gems to red. That's really only going to be able to convert the gems on top. And then I might just kill my opponent Jessica here because I don't think I can get any of the triggers. Oh, no, I can. I can actually get a Hell to Pay here. So let's let's get the hell to pay. That's that's gonna be really nice here. I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave Jessica because this is gonna have a whole bunch of red gems, and then this is going to guaranteed cast two more hell to pays, and then next turn I've got my first ability, and so that's gonna let me blow up a whole chunk of gems, and then I'm going to get more hell to pays. So this is the slow inevitable death of hell to pay, as opposed to the red season of the bolt. So the is it otters are coming down. I can absolutely see what Paladin Robin was going for here with the uh, Jessica and then utilizing Rawl's second ability. It's a creative way to go about using the second ability for sure, because that's really actually the only use that I can think of. That is, that is a good use for it. I did not consider trying that out. So it's cool to see it. We're going to go ahead. We're going to pop some gems here. We're going to see if this gives us a free spell. Uh, I do get to go ahead and fetch two Hell to Pays over here. Those are both going to be uh, very castable, I think. So let's 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 convert some gems to red. That's going to give me a free Hell to Pay here in my hand, and then that just kills my opponent. Okay, the cough killed my opponent. So that was just sort of the the general whittling down that you can get 
with this where you can see that you can just get that same spell over and over again. Hell to Pay is still very effective. It's just not quite as effective as Season of the Bold because Season of the Bold just ramps up on its own. So this is definitely a Planeswalker where I enjoy having the right cards with it. If you don't have the right cards with it, it's really not going to hit right. So for this next match, let's go ahead and switch over to my loop deck. For my loop deck, I'm going to be basing it around Ashling Flame Dancer. This is a Puzzle Masters 2 card. I do not expect 99% of you guys watching this to have this card right now. It might be that you watch this video like two, three years from now and then you get this card. But yeah, I'm just showcasing this because I feel like this is the best way to show this deck as a loop right now. So the Flame Dancer is going to make it so that when I cast spells, I'm going to ignite gems, and then I'm going to start gaining mana once I have enough ignite gems on the board. I've got Ripley Vance in the deck to ensure that I kill my opponent from casting all the spells. And then the real kill spell is going to be Season of the Bold. However, I'm really using this because it also draws a card. Follow the Bodies is going to draw cards. Into the Bay Court is going to draw cards. Meeting of the Minds is going to draw cards. Talent of the Telepath is going to draw cards. Hit the Mother Load is going to create gold and discover. And Sunken Citadel is going to convert gems. So all of this card draw is just going to ensure that the Flame Dancer is able to do its thing. I expect that this might be a little bit longer of a match unless Liliana just completely wrecks my face, which is very much so possible as I'm not running heavy removal in this version of the deck, but we'll see what we get. So for the starting hand here, the most important thing is to get our loop going. And in order to get the loop going, I need to draw into the Ashling Flame Dancer. So here I'm just going to go ahead and prioritize trying to draw into that. So Talent to the Telepath here is going to get me... Ooh, I think I'm going to go for Hit the Mother Load. Sunken Citadel is actually really tempting too, to be honest. Uh, let's... You know, I'll take the Citadel. I'll go for the Citadel this time, just because... I'm going to draw into the hit the mother load here. And so it might be that sunken citadel into hit the mother load will work out for me. So there's a heck of a lot of white gems on the battlefield right here. There is a heck of a lot of them. Okay, so I'll get I'll get the seven mana here, and then there's also a lot of green gems. Which which one will it be? I feel like it's it's bound to cascade though. Yeah, okay. Definitely cascades. And there's an Ashling Flame Dancer. Beautiful. We've got our combo piece. And then now at this point, all I really need are cards that are gonna make things tick. So I could I could take a meeting of the mines, I could take an into the Fey Court, or I could take a season of the bold. I think I'm gonna take into the Fey Court here just because it costs less mana. So we're gonna get some gold tokens down, which is nice. And then I'm gonna draw a few more cards. I get another flame dancer. Okay, I don't actually need a flame dancer here, but that's fine. My opponent kills Ripley. Yep, that's uh, very ex very much expected from a Liliana deck. And then here, I actually don't want all of these Ashlings in my hand. So I'm going to I'm going to dump the Ashling and then I'm just going to look and see what my mana options are here. So I've got a green and a white that's going to be 6 mana. I've got a green with a gold token which is going to be 6 mana. I've got just a, a white match which with a gold token, which will be six mana. So I've got a whole bunch of things that are going to be six mana. I don't quite get eight. And so here what I might do is I might just go and try and get two cards from my deck. Hope that I destroy some of those gold tokens, which I do. And then I've got a Rite of Flame and Follow the Bodies. These are the two cards that I'm going to want in my hand. Definitely, definitely. I'm going to get rid of that extra Flame Dancer, and then let's see how this goes. We're going to have the Flame Dancer come out first. I'm going to have the Rite of Flame build up Follow the Bodies, I think. It is tempting to give it to Ripley, but I think I think Rite of Flame needs to go to Follow the Bodies. So let's, let's take the most mana we can without actually destroying any of my gold tokens. So I'm going to take the green into white, into red, that's that's beautiful. So here, we're gonna start igniting gems with the Flame Dancer. And then the Rite of Flame is going to give me just a little bit more mana. Follow the Bodies will definitely enable me to, we're gonna confirm this to draw cards and give them mana. Ooh, not quite enough 
to cast that one. That's okay. I've got another follow the bodies here and I've got a Ripley Vance down as well. So at this point, I think, I think I'd probably just win this turn. We'll see. I've got Season of the Bold going. That's going to get me more of these gold tokens. I honestly wouldn't mind if some of these Ignite gems triggered soon as well. So Season of the Bold is going to ping my opponent. And then, yeah, so some of these Ignite gems are going to trigger for me. That's going to give mana to all of my cards. And then, yeah, my opponent's dead. There's, there's, there's no way, right? So we're going to Talent of the Telepath here for definitely Follow the Bodies. No questions. Follow the Bodies is just so, so good for a loop deck. Uh, we're going to draw some more cards. We've still got enough Ignite Gems on the battlefield, which is great. I'm going to confirm that. We're going to draw into some more goodies. I want Season of the Bold. Heck yeah, are you kidding me? That's that's going to be the uh, Peace de la Resistance that's going to kill my opponent. We're going to say no to the loop timer. We don't believe in loop timers. We're going to take another Season of the Bold. That's fair and balanced. Okay. And then let's say no when it pops up here in just a moment. Yeah, no, I'm not stopping the loop. We're going we're gonna to kill the opponent here. We are very much killing my opponent here. Uh, I can collect evidence three, why not? And then of these choices here, how about I take a uh, meeting of the minds? We've got to be close to getting a conversion that's going to pop all of these ignite gems, right? Yep, there it is. That's just going to blow up the board. Cool. And then I'm at full mana for sure. And then we're going to get a Sunken Citadel first. And then I believe after the Sunken Citadel is going to be the bold. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And that's game over. So that's how Raw looks like as a loop deck. You'll see that we went four for four in the training grounds for our wins. We went up against some really interesting decks. I wound up winning them all. Rawl with the right decks is definitely going to win the majority of his matches. And so there we go. 4-0. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's get into my conclusion and my final thoughts on this Planeswalker. Overall, I think that Rawl Crackling Wit is interesting in that the Planeswalker has a very unique identity, especially as compared to the other Rawls. However, I also think that this Planeswalker falls short compared to the other Rawls in terms of effectiveness. $30 to pick up this Planeswalker, I think, is a bit much. You can pick it up if you want to have, like, a new flavor of the month. I'm not saying that, like, this specific Planeswalker is overpriced, by the way. It's more just that the $30 price tag for picking up a new walker, I think, is worth it if you're going to be picking up a walker that you're going to be using a lot of. And if after watching this video and seeing the decks that I was running, you're thinking, okay, I want to run this, this Planeswalker a lot, then by all means, pick it up. But if you watch the video and you're like, you know, I'd play a few matches with this and then probably move on or move back to one of the other Rawls, then I think you can safely skip this Planeswalker. The, the limitations on the second ability and the third ability to be a first time cast only with the Is It Otters only doing the damage on Prowess for the first cast and then the Storm Otters only giving you a copy for the first cast really holds this Planeswalker back. The second Rawl doesn't have any cast limitation on the third ability that's going to ping your opponent to death. The first Rawl just gives you a lot more flexibility with fetching cards out of your deck at six loyalty instead of seven. And then you can get anything. You can throw things in your graveyard. The third ability is definitely more powerful with the ability to just ping your opponent and draw extra cards. So honestly, all in all, I think that this Planeswalker really shines in very limited ways. So on that note, as for what here I would put this Planeswalker in, I would honestly put Raw Crackling Wit in the C tier for dual color walkers. There's definitely some power here with this Planeswalker. I could consider putting it in the B tier. It's, it's somewhere in between. It's just that you really need to have good cards to make this Planeswalker shine. It does not make your cards shine more, if that makes sense. So I think that that's definitely something that holds it back a bit. With that, I think that's the entirety of my thoughts on this Planeswalker. I don't think there's anything else, anything more to say about it. Let me know. Oh, actually, there is one other thing. One other thing. Sorry. If you are wondering why I didn't use a Popper deck or a Popper Plus deck or something like that with this walker, it's because this, this walker really doesn't perform well if you don't have the right cards. And so I found that my testing with this Planeswalker without using the right cards just really wasn't engaging gameplay, and I decided to leave that out of the video. So if you're watching this video and you're like, ah, I don't have 
those cards in your video, and you didn't show me anything else cool in this video, that's more a reflection of Rawl. So that means don't get this Planeswalker, right? Okay, that was everything I wanted to say. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.